Good evening, folks, and welcome once again to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper. Folks, my voice has not improved a whole lot, and I really shouldn't be doing this. And if my doctor was here, he would probably be turning off all these switches and uh, shutting me up at the present time. But I promised you tonight's show, and I'm going to deliver what I promised. Please understand, folks, that I'm not giving you legal advice. We're just merely giving you the results of all of our investigations into this subject. This show is for educational purposes. And we advise you not to try to carry out any of the things that we, any of the procedures that we may give you on this show by yourself. There are many traps to fall into. That's why organizations like the Pilot Connection exist. And they do charge money for their services, folks. This is America, you see. This is not a socialist country. And they're entitled to charge money for their services. The small fee that they charge to set you free from the criminal organization known as the IRS is well worth the money, folks. And we'll be giving you their address several times during this program. Make sure you have pen and paper and uh, be ready to write down the information that you hear. What you're going to hear now describes me perfectly. You know, I really get angry with a lot of people. You know, I've played several constitutional programs on here, and the one show that I played about the Creator Endowed Rights, I think, was one of the most important shows that I've ever done. But very few people ever call and ask for those shows. They want shows that tell them how to save money or how to save their assets. Now, I'm going to say this, folks, and you better listen to me very carefully. Our country is in danger. Our Constitution is in danger. Without the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, none of us would have any assets to save. And I'm going to tell you, if it goes down the tubes, if this country is destroyed, if the Constitution is relegated to the trash heap, you're not going to have any assets. They'll all be taken away. Because the New World Order is going to be a totalitarian socialist state. And everything of value will be redistributed. And I hope you understand what that means, folks. There will not be any right of private property. That's one of the tenets of the Communist Manifesto. International socialism will do away with the right to own private property. So I want to tell all of those of you out there who are primarily and only concerned with saving your assets that if you maintain... If you maintain that position, you are going to lose not only your assets, but you will lose your ass in the process. And I'm not talking about that four-legged one out in the barn. Well, folks, that song is me to the T, because I learned something many, many years ago. Freedom is the only thing in the world that matters. Nothing else means anything. You see, if you're free, you can have whatever you want. Whatever you're capable of earning or building or making or creating, you can have. If you're not free, you can't have anything. You can't do anything. You must ask permission. You must grovel and beg. Freedom. You know, if we sit still and do nothing, we're going to lose our freedom and thus everything that goes with it. But if we risk everything now, then maybe we'll lose everything, but we win our freedom, we win the battle, then we can earn it all back. We can create it all again. We can gather to us whatever we deserve through our honest efforts and labor. And we can stand tall happy and proud and walk in a divine state of grace on this earth that God gave us. You can do none of that in chains. So that's why I played that song. That song's about freedom. That song's about me. That song's about everything that I love. Okay. Get ready to write. Folks, the Federal Reserve has never been audited in its history. Why? Because it was written into the law that it could not be audited. So now we have to pass a new law to audit the Federal Reserve and prove that these 
criminals are the criminals that they are. You see, ever since it was founded in 1913, the Federal Reserve System has avoided being thoroughly audited. Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 5. Remember that, Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 5 of the United States Constitution. And if you don't have a copy of the Constitution, turn off your radio now. I don't even want you listening to this program if you don't have a copy of the Constitution of the United States of America. Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 5 of the U.S. Constitution mandates that our Congress control the issuance of America's money. Yet a small clique of international bankers, through their ownership and control of the so-called Federal Reserve System, have usurped that authority. Not only that, but their agents, in the guise of a benevolent fraternal organization called Freemasonry, has infiltrated every important position of our government, military, our city governments, our state governments, and they maintain that control. A complete audit, folks, would reveal exactly who owns the Fed and how its monetary policies are conducted, something which remains a secret even to this day. Contrary to what you may have been told, the Federal Reserve is definitely not federal any more than federal dry cleaners is federal. An audit would also reveal how its rich and powerful owners and controllers use it to control the money system, to control interest rates, and to swindle taxpayers. It would let us know if Japan really owns more of the United States than we think. But it's not Japan you should be worried about. They're fifth on the list. First is the Dutch, the Netherlands. Second is Great Britain. Third is Germany. <laughs> you know why you all pick on the Japanese? Because at heart, you're all really racist. And I abhor that. You see, Japanese names are easy to recognize, and Japanese faces are easy to recognize, and so you blame it all on the Japanese. Well, you're wrong. The greatest foreign property owner in the United States of businesses and land and property is the Dutch, the Netherlands. Second is Great Britain, and third is Germany. So stop it now. If you're angry, <laughs> you have a right to be, and I want you to be, because anger instills action. We're being told that the Fed is currently being audited. But the kind of audit that needs to be conducted is not being allowed. You see, it's not really being audited at all. It's just a smoke screen to keep you off their back. <clears throat> the American people are not interested in how many pencils and paper clips the Fed uses each year, and that's the kind of phony audit that they're really carrying out. The fact that an in-depth audit of the Fed has never been conducted is just one more sad example of how Congress because it never hears from the public. In fact, more than 95% of our citizens have never, ever written to a congressman or senator in their life. And Congress is controlled by rich and powerful special interests. The people have abdicated. There are now two bills before the House of Representatives that would give Congress the opportunity to audit the Federal Reserve for the first time in its 78-year history. Now, I'm not going to tell you the number of the names of these bills because I want you to call your congressman and find out for yourself. I want you to learn to take control of this government. And if you don't do this, if you don't do this, you have no right to cry, no right to complain, no right at all. These two bills would be monumental legislation that could ultimately result in taking control of America's money system out of the hands of the international bankers and returning it to Congress as the framers of our Constitution and as our Constitution itself clearly states. These bills will not be passed unless Congress hears from American citizens like you. Congress will vote according to the wishes of those who they hear from the most. The powerful, the rich, the controllers, the puppet masters of the world. It's just that simple, folks. You know they'll hear from the banking establishment, don't you? 
Well, folks, will they hear from you? That remains to be seen. We know writing letters to your representatives is difficult. Writing letters to your senators is difficult. It can take an hour or more of your time. But folks, if you'd stop complaining and bitching and griping and just sit down and do it, you find that it will take less time than all the bitching and griping has ever taken. And then you can begin to take control again. So, <clears throat> do it, folks. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. In fact, now, I know that there's other shows that give you a phone number you can call and they'll write a letter for you. Don't do that. Because Congress doesn't pay attention to form letters. They pay attention to real letters. Real letters. So sit and write a letter yourself. Don't call somebody and let them do it for you. That's abdication. That's irresponsible. It means you're too lazy to do the very elemental things that you need to do to straighten this country out. And if you're too lazy to do that, why bother at all? Why bother at all? Your representatives cannot act in your behalf, folks, if they don't know how you feel. Your influence counts, but only if you use it. So do that, please. You know, I just realized, folks, it may take a lot more than one show to get through the information that I've got to give you tonight, so maybe it will. If I don't get it through at all tonight, then we'll continue it next Wednesday night. And just make a series out of it. But right now, write down this uh, address and phone number. The Pilot Connection. The Pilot Connection. You want to give these people a call? You want to find out the truth? Call the Pilot Connection. 6333 Pacific Avenue. Suite 334. Stockton, California. 95207. That's the pilot connection. 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suites 334, Stockton, California, 95207. And this is their phone number, area code 209-957-5493. That's 209 9 Five seven five four nine three, and I'm going to repeat it again later in the program. Now I'm going to tell you all something. You've lost your original sovereignty that all Americans were born with. Most of you have. Let me put it that way. Some of you listening, I'm sure, are sovereign citizens of the state in which you live, but most of you are not. You gave up your sovereignty, in fact, you were defrauded out of your sovereignty, because you entered into several adhesion contracts of which you are not even aware. One is called Social Security. You see, they had to have a way to take the state citizenship status, the sovereign status, away from all Americans and place them under the jurisdiction of the federal government in Washington, D.C., and make you a United States citizen. So United States citizens are only those who live within the jurisdiction of what's known as Washington, D.C., the physical boundaries, Puerto Rico, and other territories of the United States government. Those are United States citizens. Now, if you don't live in any of those places, you should not be a United States citizen, but if you have a Social Security number, you are. And there are other adhesion contracts that you can enter into that give you the status of a United States citizen. Now, I want you to listen. This is a letter written to Milton Pilot by the Commissioner of Social Security. And this is in the book written by Philip Marsh called The Complete Patriot. I'm going to read you this letter. Listen to it very carefully. Mr. Pilot sent a letter revoking his Social Security number. He wanted to get out of the status of being a United States citizen. This is the reply from the Commissioner of Social Security. 
Dear Mr. Pilot, I am responding to your notice of February the 14th, 1984. The law does not permit individuals to voluntarily withdraw from the Social Security program. See Sections 209 and 210 of the Social Security Act and Sections 3101 and 3121 of the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, which is a part of the Internal Revenue Code. Now, why is the Social Security Act part of the revenue, Internal Revenue Code? And it goes on to say here, or she does, the Social Security Act requires the Social Security Administration to establish and maintain records of wages and self-employment income for each individual whose work is covered under the program. See sections 205C2A. Workers who do not want to use their Social Security numbers for religious or other reasons should get in touch with the Internal Revenue Service in their area to explain their position and receive advice on how to proceed. Social Security taxes must be paid on earnings from covered work or self-employment. A decision not to use a Social Security number does not exempt a worker from coverage. Employers must collect the taxes on earnings covered under Social Security and report those earnings to the Social Security Administration and the Internal Revenue Service. Social Security taxes can be refunded only when taxes over the maximum amount were paid or when taxes were paid in error. A refund can be claimed by filing an amended federal income tax return for the year in question. A worker may ask an employer not to use his or her Social Security number, but without it, we cannot enter those earnings on the worker's record. They will remain in a suspense file and will not be credited until the worker furnishes his or her Social Security number and evidence of earnings. We have no authority to require an employer to provide or deny employment to anyone who refuses to disclose his or her Social Security number. This is a matter between the individual and the employer. If you have any further questions, the people in any Social Security office will be glad to help you. Signed, Martha A. McSteen, Acting Commissioner. Now, I hope you were listening to that last paragraph. You see how the Social Security system has been set up in order to gather information on your earnings for the Internal Revenue Service. You've been tricked, trapped. And it is a contract. And it makes you a United States citizen under the federal government and requires you to pay income tax. But the last paragraph here says, We have no authority to require an employer to provide or deny employment to anyone who refuses to disclose his or her Social Security number. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. And if the employer makes it a condition of employment, you can sue them. And you should. Now, here's the truth of the matter. You see, there were a lot of lies in that letter. The law itself states that Social Security is a voluntary program. And anything voluntary going in under the law is voluntary going out. Now, employers, beware. You better listen to me carefully if you are an employer. Because you can get in serious trouble as more and more people begin to wake up by trying to make people give you their social security number or make them fill out W-4 forms or from withholding income tax from their wages. Listen to me carefully. You see, we have a very serious problem in the U.S. today and it deals with fraud. It's a massive fraud perpetrated by a private corporation on the people of the United States and it's currently causing a lot of people to go out of business and causing a lot of deaths. Most business bankruptcies are caused by this fraud perpetrated by a private corporation. And this massive fraud is being perpetrated on the American people by the Internal Revenue Service. Yes, it is a private corporation, folks, and I'm holding the papers of the corporation in my hand at this moment. And you can get a copy of these incorporation papers from the Pilot Connection. So when that phony whistleblower from the Tom Valentine show said that the IRS is an agency of the federal government, he was not telling you the truth. It's a private corporation registered in the state of Delaware. 
Copies of their incorporation papers are available from the Pilot Connection for $5. $5 donation. They'll send you. Also, government agencies have a franking privilege, which means free postage. Yet, every time you get a letter from the IRS, it shows that they paid postage. Their letters, envelopes are either metered or there's regular postage stamps on them. That alone proves that it is not an agency of the United States government, but is a private corporation. Just look at the rubber stamp used by the IRS to cancel checks. The withholding of wages from employees entails one of, if not the most heinous frauds ever perpetrated. I wish we could go into greater detail, but it's too voluminous to cover in this short period of time. But the pilot connection can help you out, and I'll give you their name and address and phone number later. But I'm going to give you a short outline here. Number one, the IRS code 3402F, that's 3402F, states that the W-4 has to be a withholding exemption certificate. It has to state that, a withholding exemption certificate. The Code of Federal Regulations, 26 CFR, states that if one word is changed on the certificate, that it is an invalid certificate that does not have to be signed. Now look at the W-4 withholding allowance certificate. Notice it says withholding allowance certificate instead of the required withholding exemption certificate that the IRS is furnishing. Now, Section 3402P of the Code says that the withholding agreements are voluntary in the first place. Voluntary, folks. It's in the law. Section 3504 of the IRS Code states that an employer must be designated as a withholding agent in order to withhold taxes from an employee's check. This is done through Form 2678. Now, ask your employer if he has a Form 2678. If he does not, he cannot withhold taxes from your check. It's in the law. We have yet to find an employer who has a Form 2678. Now, if you think for one minute that this is not real, try calling the IRS. Use a phony name. They always do. And tell them that you are an employer and your employee is about to sue you for taking money out of his wages for taxes for the IRS. They will tell you, folks, that it's not their problem. <laughs> and it's not. It's your problem, see? You've been doing something that's wrong. And at that point, you should be alerted to be aware that this is a serious problem, and if you're an employer, you're in jeopardy of being sued by your employees. The IRS Strategic Plan of 1984, folks, is an insane plan designed to put all small businesses out of business. And you can get that whole plan by sending $48 to the Pilot Connection. It's their Strategic Confidential Plan written in 1984. You should get it and read it. The employees of the nation are getting up in arms about this massive theft. Those that are becoming educated and learning what the real law says instead of listening to phony experts who really are working for the IRS called whistleblowers. And by listening to talk show hosts who make judgments and don't even know what they're talking about. When Chuck Carter, Tom Valentine tell you not to even try this because you're going to go to jail. They're misleading you. And it's wrong for them to do that. Send them a copy of this tape. <laughs> Wake them up, too. The Popes of Pablum. But, you know, my admonition is listen to everybody, believe nothing. Verify everything. Get the law. Read the law. Stop listening to people. Do what I do. Read the law. Get a copy of the IRS regulations and read them. Read them. And don't listen to all this baloney that you can't make heads or tail of it. If you're an intelligent person and you understand how to read, you can. If you know how to look up definition of words and go to, to cited sections and see what they say, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. Tens of thousands of employers across the nation are going to find themselves faced with a decision to honor their employees' requests, which entails defying the IRS. 
or to go along with the IRS only to have the employee put the employer in court and sue and maybe end up owning your business. You might wish to run to your attorney or accountant for advice in this matter, but try to bear in mind that most of these people are a part of the problem and not a part of the solution. The Constitution is not even required reading in any of the law schools. Don't believe that? Go get the required reading list and look at it. These people are not taught the real law. They're taught what they are, what they are uh, supposed to enforce according to the power structure that teaches them. Ask your lawyer or your accountant what law, exactly what law, requires someone to file and pay income taxes. Their answer will most likely be the Internal Revenue Code. Then ask them to look up Section 7806B, which states that the entire code has no legal effect. And several other proofs of this are available upon request from the Pilot Connection. At this point, folks, we've got to take a little break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, I'm just giving you enough here to whet your appetite and not quite enough to get yourself in trouble. Don't try to exercise any of these things without professional help, such as the Pilot Connection can give you. Write this down. The Pilot Connection, 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suite 334, Stockton, California, 95207. That's The Pilot Connection. 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suite 334, Stockton, California, 95207. Or you can call them at area code 209-957-5493. That's 209-957-5493. Now, if you're listening and you're an employer, I'm sure that you're afraid of the IRS because of all of the propaganda that they've put out in the media over the years. But the truth is, folks, that the IRS only has one weapon, and that weapon is fear. Fear. Which, in truth, is false evidence appearing real. They operate under the color of law, not the real law. They're criminals. In actual fact, they are criminals. In the late 1700s, 96% of all Americans either knew the law or had law books in their homes. In the 1990s, the direct opposite is the case, folks. Only about 4% of Americans have law books, and half of them don't know what the law is. A quick look at the United States Constitution would show you that real taxes are duties, imposts, and excises. And you would learn that a direct tax on the people, such as income tax, is forbidden by the Constitution in 19 ways, unless the tax is voluntary, and that's exactly what it is. The IRS does not have one single law to fall back on as its defense, and that's why that phony whistleblower last Wednesday night didn't quote any laws and didn't quote any sections of the IRS code, because he can't. His position is indefensible. So what is this IRS whistleblower group all about? Well, it's to fool you folks, because they know that if there's an IRS whistleblower group and they're telling you that there's no way that you can get out of filing and paying taxes, that you'll say to yourself, well, gee, if the whistleblowers are blowing the whistle and they say i got to file and pay taxes, then i got to file and pay taxes. And they crow about having passed the Taxpayer's Bill of Rights. Folks, that's a smokescreen. You had those rights already in the Constitution. This is just baloney, more bullshit thrown at your way. And they don't provide for punishment for the IRS if they violate those Taxpayer's Bill of Rights. They've been conned once again, just like the NRA. Join the NRA, folks, you have registered your guns. And don't tell me the stuff about the membership list in the safe and the government can't get it. They've already got it. They've already got it. When are you people going to wake up? Hmm? Sometimes I think I'm wasting my time by doing what I do. But I have to do what I do because I can't save my own freedom without your help. So, I have to. 
I can't save my children without your help, so I have to do what I do. You guys can order a copy of a letter from Senator Daniel Inouye's office stating this, quote, Based on information provided by the Congressional Research Service, there is no law that specifically and unequivocally requires anyone to pay taxes, unquote. You can order that from the Pilot Connection for a dollar. <laughs> Four dollars, folks. No law that specifically and unequivocally requires anyone to pay taxes. That's true. I've already checked. I've already checked. So with the law overwhelmingly in favor of the employee in the matter, it would behoove you as an employer to look into this matter thoroughly before you take the side of the IRS in any situation. It would behoove you to learn what the law really says and not what the IRS tells you. Remember, what's sauce for the goose is also sauce for the gander, and you can relieve yourself from having to deal with the IRS as easily as your employee by contacting the Pilot Connection. With our federal government running wild and actually being 100% of the cause of the problems in this country, and with the IRS stealing money by the billions from the American people and thus causing severe recession in this country and then turning around and giving this money to foreign countries to destroy this country, you as the American businessman have a vast responsibility to help us stop this fraud before you and all the rest of us lose everything that we hold dear. You should all be taping this broadcast, and you should make many, many copies and send them out to everybody and tell them to make copies and send them out to everybody. Let's make the American dream come true. Let's make the pilot connection rich and thus make ourselves rich in the process. <laughs> right to the pilot connection. 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suite 334, Stockton, California. 95207. That's the pilot connection. 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suite 334, Stockton, California. 95207. The telephone number is area code 209 957 5493. It's area code 209 957 5493. Send a copy of this tape to Chuck Harder and Tom Valentine. Tell them to go to one of the Pilot Connection seminars and uh, learn the truth and quit uh, giving you wrong information when they don't even know what they're talking about. You see, they've done no research into the matter. They just come off the top of their head. Don't you guys try this. You're going to jail. Popes of Pablum. Popes of Pablum. Listen to everybody. Read everything. Believe nothing until you verify. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that's the only thing that will make you free. You can no longer listen to anyone and believe what they say. You can no longer read anything and believe what you read. Because the deception in the world today, in order to bring about a one world government, is so deep, folks, you have no literal conception until you dive into the pool with me and find out how deep it really is and I haven't touched the bottom yet not yet you might want to ask yourself that after I ran several shows saying that the if you join the NRA you registered your guns why all of a sudden on Radio Free America do these NRA commercials appear hmm and why did they destroy the chances of passing the Second Amendment in California, ensuring the right of the people to keep and bear arms? Look into the date when they were created and find out if it was anywhere near the time that the UN Treaty was signed and the Disarmament Agency was created. I think the results will amaze you. Also, look into the origins of the Liberty Lobby and get a copy of the Spotlight and read it. Folks, you'll find it's one of the most racist, anti-Semitic, anti-black pieces of literature in existence. And that's one of the ways they divide and conquer us. They get us to fight amongst ourselves. And while we're busy destroying ourselves, they're creeping around in the background, enslaving us all. 
enslaving us all. Don't fall into the trap, folks. You should subscribe to the Spotlight and read it. But you should believe nothing that you read until you can verify it. And I would be very careful, if I were you, about joining any organizations, unless it's a free organization that does not dictate to you, does not require you to believe in any certain manner, such as TAGI, the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence. It's merely an intelligence organization that gathers information for the benefit of all of us. That's all it is. We do not espouse any political viewpoint. We do not require our members to take any oaths. We do not require anything from our members except that they devote some of their time to obtaining information so that we can all benefit from that information and keep ourselves free. If you'd like to join CADGI, send $45 to me. Make your check out to me, William Cooper. Send it to P.O. Box 3299, Camp Verde, Arizona, 86322. It's $45. Post Office Box 3299, Camp Verde, Arizona, 86322. You get a lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. If you'd like to call Stan or just write us a letter at that address and ask for a packet of information, we'll be happy to send it to you. Or you can call Stan and talk to him on the phone. Stan's a great guy. You'll really like him. His number is 602. 567-6109. That's 602-567-6109. Stan's my right-hand man, and you won't find a better man anywhere on the face of this earth than Stan Barrington. So give him a call and talk to him. Now, for those of you who contemplate talking to attorneys or hiring attorneys to represent you, let me read you a few other things here. This is from Corpus Juris Secundum. A complete restatement of the entire American law as developed by all reported cases. In other words, precedent. This is the 1980 edition. I'm reading right from it. By Arnold O. Ganau, Editor-in-Chief, and George Gordon, Managing Editor, assisted by the editorial staff of West Publishing Company. And this is from Volume 7. Attorney and Client. Attorney and Client. And client. Here's what it says. With an obligation to the courts and to the public no less significant than his obligation to his clients, thus an attorney occupies a dual position which imposes dual obligations. His first duty is to the courts and the public, not to the client. And whenever the duties to his client conflict with those he owes as an officer of the court in the administration, of justice, the former must yield to the latter. The office of attorney is indispensable to the administration of justice. <laughs> sure it is, if you're the state. Now listen to this. A client is one who applies to a lawyer or counselor for advice and direction in a question of law or commits his cause to his management in prosecuting a claim or defending against a suit in a court of justice. One who retains the attorney is responsible to him for his fees and to whom the attorney is responsible for the management of the suit. One who communicates facts to an attorney expecting professional advice. Clients are also called wards of the court in regard to the relationship with their attorneys. Now listen to this, folks. Wards of court, infants, and persons of unsound mind. <laughs> you see, if you hire an attorney, you have declared yourself legally incompetent, and you become a ward of the court. This country was originally set up under the common law, and the common law states that only you can represent yourself and protect your rights. So, also, now... Yeah, Listen to this, folks. In the CF, the CJS, CJS, 1785, it plainly states, and I'm reading right from it, the United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. Are you getting that? <laughs> 
And I just love this. I just love this. Non-citizens. Non-citizens. This is uh, 242 is the number of the law. Persons in the state, not its citizens, are either citizens of other states or aliens. Are the citizens of other states or aliens? Isn't this interesting? You know, it's funny what you can decide when you start using your own brain and stop listening to other idiots. <laughs> It is absolutely amazing. Okay, folks, I'm reading directly from the 39th Congress, Session 1, Chapter 31, 1866. Chapter 31, an act to protect all persons in the United States and their civil rights and furnish the means of their vindication. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that all persons born in the United States and not subject to any foreign power, excluding Indians, not taxed, are hereby declared to be citizens of the United States, and such citizens of every race and color, without regard to any previous condition of slavery or involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall have the same right in every state and territory in the United States to make and enforce contracts, to sue, be parties, and give evidence, to inherit, purchase, lease, sell, hold, and convey real and personal property, and to full and equal benefits of all laws and proceedings for the security of person and property, as is enjoyed by white citizens, and shall be subject to like punishment, pains, and penalties, and to none other, any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom to the contrary notwithstanding. I hope you understand what I just read. Okay. It goes on and on and on and on and on. But this is important, too. And be it further enacted, this is in section 2, that any person who under color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom, shall subject or cause to be subjected any inhabitant of any state or territory to the deprivation of any right secured or protected by this act, or to different punishment, pains, or penalties on account of such person having at any time been held in a condition of slavery or involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, or by reason of his color or race, then is prescribed for the punishment of white persons, shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor, and on conviction shall be punished by fine not exceeding $1,000 or imprisonment not exceeding one year or both in the discretion of the court. And anyone who acts under color of law to take away your constitutional rights or any right that you have, you can sue them under that law and collect and they stand a chance of going to jail. Now, listen to this. Upon introducing the provisions which eventually became 18 United States Code 242, its sponsor, Senator Stewart, explicitly stated that the bill protected all persons. He noted that the bill simply extends to foreigners, not citizens, the protection of our laws. He added, this bill extends the equal protection of the laws to aliens, so that all persons who are in the United States shall have the equal protection of our laws. It extends the operations of the Civil Rights Bill to all persons within the jurisdiction of the United States. Now, <laughs> powers remaining to the states. Listen to this. Okay. Powers remaining in the states. Quote, People of a state are entitled to all rights which formerly belonged to the king by his prerogative. So when you heard me say, folks, that we were the first people in the world to ever be free, standing in our own right as a king, walking in a divine state of grace on this earth, I wasn't joking, I took it from the law. From the law. and for whom all governments exist and act. 
The cases cited are just a few of the rulings made by the Supreme Court and then the law. The issue of sovereignty, those cases are based on Barron versus Baltimore. Go look it up, folks. Barron versus Baltimore. Seven Peters, 243. And then later on, by the case Fairbanks versus the United States. 181, United States, 283. And the court in all of these cases said this, and I quote, Powers denied are not to be implied. They are to be obtained, if at all, from and in the same manner provided by those who originally granted the enumerated powers, but who at the same time denied powers. In 1909, the court in the case Canvas, Kansas, Kansas versus Colorado, 206 U.S. 4B, the court clearly recognized the three sovereigns in the United States as the federal government, the state government, and we, the people, under the Tenth Amendment. In the Federal Reporter, second series, section, uh, or page 1418, section 752, in our country, the people are sovereign, and the government cannot sever its relationship to the people by taking away their citizenship. 387 U.S. at 257, 87 Supreme Court at 1662. The court held that a United States citizen possesses a constitutional right to remain a citizen unless he voluntarily relinquishes that citizenship. Uh, in Vance v. Terrazas, 444, U.S. 252-100, Supreme Court 540-62, um, and a bunch of other numbers. In 1980, the Supreme Court elaborated on the voluntary relinquishment proviso. It rejected the Secretary of State's argument that a citizen loses his citizenship simply by voluntarily performing an act that Congress has de designated an expatriating act. The court stated that a person loses his citizenship only if he intends to relinquish his citizenship, whether the intent is expressed in words or is found as a fair inference from proved conduct. In the last analysis, the court said, expatriation depends on the will of the citizen rather than on the will of Congress and its assessment of his conduct. You may wonder what this is all about. Well, folks, it will all come together for you, maybe not tonight. Because <laughs> I'm going to just continue this right on many Wednesdays as it takes. Whistleblowers, my... Well, let's not get carried away here, Bill. Now, you socialists should really like this one because it's going to blow your mind. None of you really understand the law. Right. Right. The word right. Civil rights, folks, are those which have no relation to the establishment, support, or management of government. They consist of the power of acquiring and enjoying property. Now all you socialists take that and stick it where the sun don't shine. I just love this. Civil rights consist of the power of acquiring and enjoying property, of exercising the parental and marital power and the like, they are the absolute rights of persons, the right of personal security, the right of personal liberty, and the right to acquire and enjoy property as regulated and protected by law. They are the rights which, according to the fundamental principles of American government, are unalienable. I found that, folks, in the People vs. Washington, 1869, 36C, Sections 658 and 662. A civil right is a right given and protected by law, and a person's enjoyment thereof is regulated entirely by law that creates it. Isn't it amazing? Licenses. Or wait a minute, let's go up here. Licenses. Income tax held invalid as occupation tax. General Acts 1923, number 345. Levying a gross income tax on all incomes, including those derived from professions, businesses, and occupations of all kinds, provides an occupation and income tax, and not a privilege tax, and is invalid. 
<laughs> under the Constitution. Article 10, Section 5. The state having no authority to tax for revenue occupations which are of common right. Now that grab you? Licenses. A constitutional provision defining and limiting the state's taxing power necessitates, no, necessarily excludes what is not enumerated, and while the legislation may confer the right on counties and municipalities to tax occupations for legal purposes, it cannot itself tax such occupations for state revenue purposes in view of the Constitution, Article 10, Section 5. This is the law, folks. I'm quoting right out of the law. These are all from court cases. This is all precedent. Gross income tax held as unconstitutional. Acts 1923, number 345, commonly designated as the Riggs Income Tax Law, imposing gross income tax on all persons and corporations is invalid as violating constitutional Article 10, Section 5, relating to imposition of taxes. Taxation. Income tax held excise tax, not prohibited by Constitution. An income tax is neither a property tax nor a tax on occupations of common right, but is an excise tax but has no power to declare as a privilege and tax for revenue purposes occupations that are of common right. <clears throat> you beginning to wake up out there, folks? Huh? I tried to call that guy to get him on this show, and I'm going to play you now what I got. Folks, I made that call during normal business hours. Nobody answers the phone. It's a trap. You leave your name, address, and phone number, and I'm telling you right now, that's all they want. Now remember, folks, the information that you've heard on this show tonight is for educational purposes only. Don't try to go out and detax yourself without professional help. You can get in big trouble. Now, if you want to do it or if you want to find out more about it, I suggest that you do set yourself free. Write to the Pilot Connection, 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suite 334, Stockton, California, 95207. That's the Pilot Connection, 6333 Pacific Avenue, Suite 334, Stockton, California, 95207. Or you can call them at 209-957-5493. That's area code 209-957-5493. We will be continuing this next Wednesday night. And the Wednesday night after that, we're going to go through so many laws and so many things that it'll make your head swim and you'll find out that the IRS is a criminal organization and you've been paying a lot of money into their pockets for many years that you didn't have to. And quit listening to these idiots who come on the radio or on TV and tell you that this is a bunch of nonsense. You investigate it for yourself. You check the law yourself. You attend a Pilot Connection seminar and you will find out for yourself. There are tens of thousands of people who are out of the system now and you can be one of them. If you'd like to join Kaji, send 45 $5 to me, William Cooper, P.O. Box 3299, Camp Verde, Arizona, 86322. Good night, and God bless each and every one of you.